Hey, Grand Adventurers, welcome back. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and this week, we're gonna be traveling along one of our favorite stretches of the Oregon coastline, the Central Oregon coast, ranging all the way from Newport down to Florence. So stay tuned. We love the Oregon coast, especially that section of the central Oregon coastline stretching from Florence north to Newport. This marks our third visit to the area, and it's been five long years since we were last here. In an effort to avoid summertime heat, we've returned this season for a long overdue visit. This is an extraordinarily scenic stretch of coastline, with much to see and attract the RV traveler. We've put a link right here on the screen to our very early episode 52 from our last visit to the Newport area. But our objective in 2023 is to spend time visiting places that we've either overlooked or missed on prior visits. If you'd like to learn more about this area than we're showcasing in this episode, we invite you to go back and check out our episode 52. Thanks to the Pacific Ocean's influence upon the weather, along with an almost daily marine layer blowing in off the ocean, we've been treated all week to highs never rising above the lower 60s, even though this is the final week of June when temperatures just a few miles inland skyrocket. We'll bring you to Newport momentarily. But first, let's head to Walport, the first town south of Newport. Walport lines the shores of Alsea Bay, where it meets the ocean, which is home to thousands of Dungeness crab, clams, salmon, and steelhead, among other marine species. Continuing south along US 101, otherwise known as the Oregon Coast Highway, Charming Yahats is named for a native word that translates to dark water at the foot of the mountain. Almost as soon as you leave Yahats heading southbound, you enter what is perhaps the most stunning scenic stretch of this coastline, the area surrounding Cape Perpetua. Here, rugged black volcanic basalt has tumbled into the sea, producing surging natural landmarks like Devil's Churn, Spouting Horn, and Thor's Well. One of the most scenic portions of this beautiful coastline lies at Hesita Head, a 200-foot bluff jutting out into the sea that's home to our favorite lighthouse along the entire Oregon coast.
the 56-foot Hasita Head Lighthouse has warned mariners about this rocky outcropping since 1894. The lighthouse was staffed until 1963, when an automated beacon was installed visible some 20 miles offshore. Finally, continuing south of Aceta Head, you arrive in Florence. The city of Florence centers around a vibrant Old Town district lining the river just inside where the river meets the ocean. Here, visitors will find a marina, quaint shops, fascinating galleries, and refreshing local food and drink. When we come right back following a quick ad break, we'll bring you to South Beach State Park, where we're camping for the week, as well as show you around the Newport area, including our visit to the Oregon Coast Aquarium and the nearby historical logging town of Toledo. So stay tuned. The campground at South Beach State Park is positively massive. A virtual camping city comprised of 227 water and electrical sites spread over nine loops, 60 tent sites, 27 yurts, three group tent camps, and a hiker-biker camp. Reservations open and frequently fill up six months in advance. Our water and electric site here costs $35 per night. This is the same campground we stayed at back in 2018. It's notoriously difficult to score a state park campsite along the Oregon coast. And Grand Adventurers already know that we hate to plan far ahead. So we turn to our friends at CampNav, an automated service that locates cancellations at sold out campgrounds. As always seems to be the case, CampNav delivered, providing us with a number of site cancellations from which to choose only a couple of weeks prior to our arrival. If you're looking for a sold out campsite, we highly recommend heading on over to CampNav.com. The 
Campgrounds Hospitality Center provides campers with maps, brochures, souvenirs, and camp items, as well as free frisbees and horseshoes for the campground's 18-hole disc golf course and horseshoe pits. From our campsite, it's merely a beautiful quarter-mile walk through the forest to access the pristine Pacific Ocean Beach here. One of the great things about traveling along the Oregon coast in the summertime is thanks to the Pacific Ocean and the marine layer that comes in daily, temperatures are moderate even in the heat of the summer. We've had temperatures overnight in the 50s, which is perfect for sleeping on our RV mattress from our video sponsor, Brooklyn Bedding. Improve your sleep while camping with a new RV mattress from our video sponsor, Brooklyn Bedding. They offer four different mattress constructions in 21 different sizes, depending on preference and price point. Everything from standard queen to all of those funky odd RV sizes. Brooklyn Bedding manufactures all of its mattresses right at their factory in Arizona. And RVMattress.com ships them right to your door for free, all rolled up and compressed in a vacuum seal. Just cut the wrap to unroll the mattress onto your bed, then cut the vacuum seal. For our mattress, Brooklyn Bedding starts with a layer of high-density foam for a supported base. Just above the base, an 8-inch core of over a thousand individually encased coils provides the essential support. Immediately above the coils is a 1-inch layer of memory foam and 2-inch layer of hyper-elastic Titanflex foam. Finally, at the very top is a 1.5-inch layer of antimicrobial Copperflex foam with Titan Cool which is designed to maintain an ideal sleep body temperature of 88 degrees. Every RV mattress from Brooklyn Bedding comes with a 10-year warranty and a 120-night sleep trial. Visit rvmattress.com slash grandadventure to get 25% off your entire purchase with promo code grandadventure. South Beach State Park lies on the outskirts of Newport a real working fishing town incorporated in 1882 that's home to one of Oregon's largest commercial fishing fleets. Although Newport boasts of being the Dungeness Crab capital of the world, local fisheries also include salmon, halibut, cod, rockfish, and tuna. <music> The 
Newport's Bayfront area is a vibrant cultural district with shops, art galleries, chowder houses, and restaurants squeezed right between fish processing plants and canneries. Here you can even buy live Dungeness crab right off the boat, or simply stroll the shops lining Bayfront Boulevard before ducking into one of the numerous restaurants for a bite to eat. I love it when my dinner stares back at me. One of the best things about our campsite at South Beach State Park is its proximity to my favorite Oregon seafood shack of all time, South Beach Fish Market. picked up a couple of pounds of steamers from South Beach Fish Market, which we'll cook up right at our campsite. When we come right back, following another quick ad break to pay the bills, we'll learn about them. local marine life at the Oregon Coast Aquarium and some local history in the nearby logging town of Toledo. So stay tuned. One attraction in Newport that we've missed on our two previous visits is the Oregon Coast Aquarium. We're going to rectify that this year and bring you along as we tour the aquarium's exhibits. This is a public aquatic and marine science exhibition facility, offering exhibits that showcase seabirds, marine mammals, fishes, invertebrates, and plants, primarily native to the Oregon coast. The Aquarium, a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization, was founded 30 years ago, when Newport's economy took a dramatic downturn, when both the timber and the commercial fishing industries fell upon hard times.
while we enjoyed our visit to the Oregon Coast Aquarium and the many kids visiting with parents and grandparents appeared positively fascinated by the exhibits, we felt just slightly underwhelmed, especially when considering the $26 price of admission. While much of the attention to the Central Oregon Coast focuses along the coastline itself, a short seven miles inland, Toledo invites you into the dense Oregon forest. Situated at the head of Yaquina Bay, Toledo is a charming riverside enclave in the woods where logging meets boating, where fishing meets the railroad. Once a bustling lumber mill town with three active sawmills, only one remains operating in Toledo today. These pilings once restrained rafts of logs lashed together to head to the sawmills. Visitors may learn about Toledo's local railroad history at the Yaquina Pacific Railroad Historical Society, which hosts a collection of railroad artifacts, locomotives, and antique rail cars. Port of Toledo offers free hour-long sailings aboard the Yaquina Queen on Thursday and Sunday afternoons throughout the summer. Tours are offered on a first-come, first-served basis and limited to 10 participants. So we truly hope that you've enjoyed visiting the Central Oregon coast with us. Coming up next week, we're going to be traveling further north to a private spot at a hip camp, also near the northern Oregon coast. So if you're not yet a great adventurer, this is the perfect time for you to smash that little subscribe button right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and ring that notification bell to be sure that you never miss a grand adventure which we premiere every Wednesday evening. We'd be truly honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. But understand, it is extremely important to us that if you like this episode, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, that's where you're going to find the comment section where we'd love to hear from you after each grand adventure. So until next week from the Northern Oregon coast, please remember life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.